part and I'm going to explain about the introduction part. So, let me ask you a question. Do you know about the magistrate power in Malaysia? So, basically, the magistrate has power to try, determine and hear the criminal trials, make an inquiry for complaint of offences, to issue summons or warrant of arrest, make order relating to the adjournment, bills and transfer of cases, as well as hold inquiry for death. However, there is an exception for this as stipulated under Section 128 of the Criminal Procedure Code which stipulates about the cognizance of an offence. So, under Section 128, there are four circumstances have been stated down which is A. Upon receiving a complaint under the Code B. Upon the magistrate as knowledge or suspicion that an offence has been committed and C. When the public prosecutor aware the offence has been committed and made a warrant on his hand that required the magistrate to make an inquiry about the offence and the magistrate received the warrant and the, the person under custody has been brought before the magistrate without any process and the person has been accused to commit an offence where the magistrate has jurisdiction to try the case. So, it has to be noted that magistrate only can make order for the cognizance of an offence after it takes place or otherwise the order will be invalid. So, if the court has no jurisdiction to the cognizance, the written session from the PP must be obtained by virtue of section 129 of the CPC. And after that, the accused can require his or case to be tried by another magistrate under section 128 clause 2 of the CPC. Hi, Assalamualaikum. This is Suhaila Chesiswa 7A and right now I'm going to share about the facts of the case and also the judgment of this case. So, this case happened on 11 January 1975. It involved four individuals and one legal counsel. The four individuals, one of it named Mr. Martin Lee and three other individuals were found guilty for murder and were brought to the magistrate court. Mr. Raja who act as the legal counsel for this case made an application on behalf of the accused to bring them to have the medical examination under the allegation that those accused persons were beaten up and manhandled by the police. Unfortunately, Mr. Raja's application was not granted and Mr. Raja also was not allowed to see the clients. Mr. Raja contended that his right as a legal counsel to the accused persons was denied. In the end, the court, in the opinion that there was no complaint made for the accused that said that the accused were beaten up by the police. Also, there is no evidence that shows that the accused asked for any legal practitioner to defend them in the court. And lastly, there is no provision in any legislation in Malaysia that stated that about the time limit prescribed given to the accused person to consult any legal practitioner to represent them in the court. Eventually, the court quashed the application made by Mr. Raja and then the allegation by Mr. Raja was uh, said to be invalid. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and a very good day. My name is Nurul Amira binti Mamat Zaidi and I will be presenting about the analysis of the principle. In the case that has been reviewed, the noticeable principle that can be drawn is the initiation of proceedings. Firstly, there are four situations that allow the magistrate to take consonance of an offence as stated in Section 128. Uh, subsection 1 of Criminal Procedure Code. The first situation is when the magistrate receives a complaint as defined in the CPC. Next, upon the knowledge of the magistrate or any suspicion that an offence has been committed or when the public prosecutor has knowledge that the offence is committed and requires the magistrate to inquire such offence with warrant. Last but not least, in the situation where any person was brought before the magistrate and such offence is within the ju jurisdiction. While Section 133 of CPC highlights the procedure of examination of complainant where when the magistrate takes, co takes cognizance of an offence on a complaint, a date of examination of the complainant needs to be set by the magistrate and written notice to be served to public prosecutor within seven clear days prior to the examination date. The written notice needs to include the particulars of the complainant. 
the examination should not be started until the notice is being served as required. In addition, the magistrate is required to examine the complainant under oath. In applying the principle to the case, the magistrate in PP versus Ma Chuan Lim and others granted the application for an order in regards to the medical treatment after the accused counsel made a complaint. The complaint was about the fact that the accused was assaulted by the police. In this case, the learned judge decided that in order to have a valid order, it is required for a magistrate to inquire first in regards to the alleged offence which was in this case, the assault made by the police against the accused. And such order needs to be made under oath upon a complainant which on the contrary, in this case, there is no complainant to be made. It is clear that the examination of complainant is required under Section 133 of CPC as above mentioned and such procedure have not been provided. One of the procedures is that the magistrate shall examine the complainant upon a complaint to be made and under the oath. The application of this principle can be seen in the case reviewed where the learned judge revised the order made by the magistrate where in that case there is no complaint thus the order could be seen as not a valid order. Hi, my name is Noni Lam Saribinda Azmir. I will be explaining on the analysis of the related case. Following the thorough reading of the case of PP against Ma Chun Lin and others, it can be said that it concerned with the procedural matters under the wings of initiation of proceedings. It is vital to ensure that the magistrate must know when is the appropriate time to examine the complainant. In this instant case, the magistrate has added in granting the application made by the counsel who is not properly appointed by the arrested person. The magistrate must have taken appropriate steps prior to allowing such applications so as to avoid violation of such procedure. The case of Bereza Ken Moher against PP 2013 portrayed a straightforward and true procedure of the magistrate's authority in initiating a proceeding. It is in line with the code whereby the magistrate may take cognizance after receiving a valid complaint. To cross-check with the other case, the case of Tan Ho Wat against PP 1980, the magistrate himself had taken the lead to initiate the judicial proceedings without inquiring any complaint. Meanwhile, in the case of Ri Rasih Musami, it shows the lack on the part of the magistrate when he immediately issued an arrest warrant, merely relying on the complaint received. As a last note, to understand the wording of convenient speed, the High Court judge had based on the landmark case of Buxton against Buxton that refers to a reasonable time which does not exceed nor require immediate force. It varies according to each case and thus, in the instant case, there is no violation made. That's it from me. Thank you. In conclusion, this case above has portrayed how the magistrate has correctly used his power in arriving at the decision on the cognizance of the offence because there is no complaint under the oath has been made. Through this case, it enshrined that every complaint made by the complainant must be under oath or otherwise, the magistrate cannot make any order for a deprecation made. If the magistrate still makes the order without thoroughly examining and without sufficient reason that the offence has been committed, the magistrate is said to be erred in making the said order.